Welcome to Herring Drives. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is measure the gap, and the gap is 105 mil. Okay, so the battery is disconnected, and now we're going to take off these protective plastic covers, which cover the strut brace and some of the electrics underneath. You need a 10 mm spanner or socket to undo these, and a trim removal tool. I didn't have a trim removal tool, so I just used a scraper and a pair of pliers once I'd got access to the centre pin. Carefully remove the plastic covers and just put them to one side, making sure they know where anyone's going to run over them. Now you need to take these plastic covers off so that you can get the 16mm bolts underneath there. Okay, so now take off your electrical connections for the suspension and also take off the weatherproof uh, boots for the top of the suspension struts using your trim removal tool. Okay, so now we're going to take off the carbon strut brace using the 13mm. There's three bolts at the back left and the back right and two bolts at the front. Carefully, once you remove this, put it out of the way again so that no one can stand on it or run it over. Okay, now we're going to take off the connections to the adaptive struts, or dampeners should I say. Be very careful when prying these off, they, they're quite tricky, but just take your time and just pull them off. And I put mine in the toolbox out of the way, again, so no damage can come to them. Okay, so now we're going to take off the big aluminium strut brace using E12 socket and an E14 as well as a 16mm socket for the ones just under the wiper blades at the back of the engine bay. E14s are the ones just in front of the gas struts in their recessed holes. I'm certainly cheating here using my little stumpy Milwaukee M12 impact driver. If you're going to do a lot of work to your car or you plan to, they're definitely worthwhile investing in.
We're now taking off the water header tank away from the top cap for the suspension to make sure that's out of the way. To get a bracket out of the way you need a 10mm and a T20 Torx. Okay, out with the aluminium strut race now, put it out of the way so it doesn't get damaged by anyone or anything. Okay, so now I'm going to start taking off some of the top cap bolts, leaving one or two in just to make sure that the unit doesn't drop down. At this point, I'll obviously point out that the car is jacked up with the wheels. Okay, so now for the struts, you just take the link arm out, which is again T30, I think, and a 16. Just need to take the top one out. No need to do the bottom one. The way I'm doing it is I'm taking out this uh, M10 bolt, which is 16mm head, just so that I can get the bracket off for the brake pipe and um, the ABS sensor. That way I can pull the strut down without putting any tension on the brake hose or the electrical connections and causing any unnecessary damage. When talking these back together, the uh, sway bar end link is 28 newton meters and the strut pinch bolt is 82 newton meters. When you're doing the near side front, you also need to make sure you disconnect the leveling sensor as to not cause any damage to that. Okay, so we've prized the strut out and now we're going to put the spring compressors on. Once we put the spring compressors on, we'll take the centre uh, strut nut off the top, which is a 18mm. We've removed the top cap, take out the bump stop and the dust shield and keep them all together. Where the spring sits, make sure you give it a good clean out. Okay, so getting the new spring ready. Now, I didn't see in the instructions anywhere that it said you had to put it a certain way up, so what I did was I just made sure that the text and the name on the spring were facing the right way up. Okay, so we've got spring compressors back on, we've got dust shield back on which sits on a little lip, don't forget to put it on that little lip which I do a bit later on and the bump stop in there. Get your 18mm nut, get it started on the thread and then start to align your strut back into place. Ok, 
Okay, so when we get that top cap back in place, get a bolt in there to secure it, and now we'll go through the torque settings. For the top caps, 30 newton meters plus 90 degrees. For the strut nuts, it's the same again, 30 newton meters plus 90 degrees. Then for the, I think E12s is 34 newton meters, and the E14s 40 newton meters. And the two at the back, 56 plus 90 degrees. And then 28 newton meters for the carbon strut brace. So now the car's dropped down, you can already see that the gap's definitely lower before the springs have even settled. And do your wheel nuts up now to 142 newton meters. Okay, so onto the rears. Give your camera bottle a good clean and mark it on the surfaces. Now you want to remove both the dampener bolt and your eccentric camera bolt so that the arm can be lowered and the spring pulled out. Now it's time to take off the leveling sensor as we did on the front. Now, I learned with the other side, but I didn't film it. But if you turn the eccentric bolt while it's still in situ, it will actually take a lot of the pressure off that is currently sitting on the suspension and make it a bit easier to get out. Whereas as you can see, I made a little bit of a meal of getting this out because there was still some pressure on the bolt. And I didn't want to damage the threads from by punching it through from the other side. Okay, so now you can get your spring out, and as you can see, there's a considerable height difference. Make sure you put both of your rubber end caps on properly. Okay, putting the spring back in, there is a locating nipple, and that needs to go in the outer of the two holes you'll see in that bottom arm. Axes are located for the boots basically to stop it spinning around and disappearing off and getting the spring chattering on the bottom of the arm. Do your best to make sure the holes align before you start hammering any bolts in with half a hole showing and damaging any threads. So now the eccentric camber bolt is in. You also need to make sure you get your washer on the right way as well.
So with all the hassle this dampening bolt was giving me, I then realised after I'd put it in that I'd put it in the reverse way to what it came out. So take note when taking your bolts out and lay them out on the floor together as they came out. Okay, now using the 21mm spanner, start to just align my marks and start tightening up the other side. This camber won't be perfect because of the shortened spring, it will have changed the geometry somewhat, but it will at least be enough to get you somewhere without putting any horrible and even wear on your tyres. Okay, it's time to talk up a camera bolt which is 165 newton meters and your strut bolt is 100 newton meters plus 90 degrees of rotation Whoops, that was close, nearly forgot to connect the levelling sensor before putting the wheel on. And there we have it, here's the finished article. Certainly looks better in my opinion now I have to say. Now the car at this point has been for a drive and uh, spring should be a bit more settled. So we measured the rears and they were 5mm lower and then the fronts as you can see here at just about yeah 90mm which is a 15mm drop so pretty much on the money from what I've state but no really pleased with it and I think it looks great thanks very much for watching everyone please like subscribe follow me on Instagram and I'll see you at the next one